Well, it's that time again. We have another winter storm on the way. I'm meteorologist Michael Prianti. I'm joined with Mike Mahalik. And Mike, we we have a, a big winter storm on the way, but uh, there is some uh, interesting things with the track. And of course, that's going to mean whether you end up on the snowy side of things or the rainy side of things. Right, for sure. I mean, this is going to be you know, we're pretty confident that this storm is going to be impacting the eastern portion of the United States. So that's one thing we're sure of. We're going to see a storm in some way or another, and it's just going to have to come down to that exact track and and how everything's going to play out, where that rain snow line is going to land. And we'll cover that a lot in this video. Of course. So let's just dive right in and and uh, not delay things. So this is the upper level map, 500 millibars, kind of showing you how the pattern is. This is the GFS. And really, our, our pieces of energy are, are kind of across the Pacific Northwest. And is that Saskatchewan, Mike? I'm not sure if that's... Uh, if that's you got uh, Alberta there first. Alberta and then, and then Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. That's uh, it. I'm not, I'm not very uh, attuned to my Canadian folks, so I apologize <laughs> uh, of my, uh, my regional, uh, uh, you know understanding yeah, sure. of Canada. It's okay. But either way, we have uh, some energy coming out of Canada, and it's starting to dig across the lower plains. And you notice here this kind of like U-shape is where it's starting to dig. And as mm -hmm. we go forward in time here, this is Saturday afternoon, it really starts to crank up, and we have an upper-level low kind of developing across the southern plains into, mm -hmm. the, uh, into, the, into the southern parts of the U.S. Now, this is kind of where our system develops here. And it's yep. going to develop as like a low-pressure system in the south, and that's going to start coming up the coast from there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, therein lies the problem. Where exactly <laughs> does that surface flow end up when it starts riding up the coast? Uh, you know, there's a couple of things in play. There's a good ridge out west, which is helping to amplify the pattern. There's a storm that's exiting uh, off the eastern seaboard um, ahead of this on uh, Friday. Um, so that's also working to amplify a little bit of a ridge. Um, and if Mike could kind of show you that in between, um, the two systems. So, um, basically this system is going to round that corner. Um, it's going to strengthen and kind of thread the needle in between here. Um, so we're going to have to see how that all plays out. Um, but you know, Mike, I, I think this is going to be a pretty powerful storm as it rides up the eastern seaboard, whether it's a bit more interior or whether it's more towards the coast. Of course, Mike. And, you know, this is the Euro right now. Again, lots of things in play. Interesting part of the Euro has a little bit of more energy back to the west, which could try to fling this a bit farther west. And that's kind of what it shows versus the GFS. But again, the surface low is really not going to be a whole lot different. This is the GFS's uh, surface map heading into uh, notice that mm -hmm. big offshore system that uh, just missed us. This could have been something we'd be talking about for tomorrow, but it's just offshore and deepening. Here's mm -hmm. our next piece of energy that's coming in this is going to be where our storm is developing lows developing out in eastern texas and uh it's going to be kind of forming across the southern parts of the u.s and here it comes yep. big high pressure out ahead of it it's going to supply mm -hmm. a lot of cold air notice a little bit of a damming set up across virginia it's going to keep that cold air and they start the mix and there's the mm -hmm. low right into virginia but i mean 988 it's it's a pretty potent storm a lot of these mm -hmm. uh, bars close together typically means you get a lot of wind out of that very close packed we call them isobars very mm -hmm. strong system very tight and a lot of wind mike yeah a lot of wind because you have that tight gradient between that strengthening low pressure system and the high pressure off to the north and east so when that happens and they get close together and those isobars tighten up that's where we're going to have a lot of wind and we're talking uh, along the Jersey Shore, we might have some wind gusts, 40 to 50 miles an hour, maybe even more, maybe 60 miles an hour, uh, depending on how this cranks up. Uh, interior, you know, probably more like 30 to 40 mile an hour wind gusts, that sort of thing. Um, so we're not looking as substantial there, but it's still a problem, especially for the, you know, those coastal regions. Also some coastal flooding issues that we're going to have there too. Um, especially as you get towards the northern portion of the New Jersey shoreline and possibly into Long Island and the Long Island Sound. 
of course, and we'll show some maps just a little bit. This is the Euro again, very long tail across the. Uh, mm -hmm. This actually might show a nice little uh, satellite setup with the, with with the the comma head uh, up to the north, um, and of course yeah. this long line of storms that are coming in. But again, that's going to fiddle in, like Mike said, a lot of mm -hmm. wind and a lot of water into south in the southern eastern parts of uh, New Jersey. Yeah, and you know, back to the snow amounts, it does look like it starts as snow for a lot of areas, you know, even starting back in Virginia as in the heads north. I mean, maybe coastal places, you know, do, you know, start with rain and, and they probably stay as rain through parts of southern New Jersey there. Um, but this does look like it's going to be a snow to mix to rain situation further uh northwest of i-95 you may get stuck around 32 degrees and have some freezing rain issues um during this system but good thump of snow should hit a lot of areas um you know before we get this transition over to the mixing um i think the real heavy stuff is going to be out further to the west um that's where those foot amounts will be possible or possibly more in a few spots you know, you're talking about areas of western Pennsylvania moving up through upstate New York, uh, north central Pennsylvania. Um, somewhere in there is going to get hit really good by this storm with a lot of snow. Um, still substantial snow uh, heading northwest of I-95 there in, in, in uh, Pennsylvania and uh, Lehigh Valley, um, uh, heading into northwest New Jersey, into parts of the Hudson Valley. Still going to get hit pretty good, um, but just not those big time amounts. Of course, of course. And, uh, you know, the maps show it. Of course, these are just uh, snow maps. They're not forecasts. And these are 10 to 1, meaning at one inch of liquid, mm -hmm. you get 10 inches of snow, which should be fair for most areas. I think where it might be a bit iffy is this bordering area where a lot of the mixing can occur. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe not so much in the line of four to five inches if there's some sleet mixed in and some rain. But this does show, Mike, the uh, the strong gradient setting up wherever you have that mixing line. And of course, this is going to go back and forth here over the next couple of days as models are trying to pinpoint and things might be colder, might things might be warmer. It's all going to be how that how those winds really set up. And uh, and one final thing before we, if we end it off here, but um, I do want to show the winds. And mm. if I could pull that up right here. Okay. So as Mike was talking about, coastal flooding and winds are going to be a big factor here. This is one solution from the GFS with the low. And you see a lot of that big old south, south, easterly fetch. Um, mm -hmm. And these colors out here are about 50 to 60 mile an hour gusts. Pretty much pretty strong winds. You get a lot of sure. water coming in. And this is about early, early Monday morning, like two to three in the morning. High tide, I believe, is going to be kind of closer to like sunrise so a lot of that yeah. water is going to be coming in beforehand which is good but still it's going to lead to some higher tides possibly mm -hmm. some minor flood stage and even moderate flood stage at parts of the jersey shore and even Lo southern long island yeah um for sure and, and uh you know um that's what happens when you get this long fetch like that and um you know Fortunately, it sort of looks like, you know, high tide won't exactly match up with the strongest onshore winds, which could be beneficial once you get to uh, the southern part of the New Jersey shoreline down towards the Delmarva. Um, but, you know, places on the north side there up until the Long Island Sound, you know, that may not be so great. I mean, like Mike was saying, some moderate uh, flooding uh, may be possible um, in those coastal areas. Exactly. And, you know, don't want to say it yet, but uh, there could even be some borderline major impacts if this thing slows down enough and you have enough of a fetch. But we'll mm -hmm. say moderate flooding for now in, in most places across the northern parts of the coastline where, where you have the higher tides. We don't have really high tides, which is good. It is a full moon, but it's not the highest full moon we could see with the coastal flooding. So and well, that about wraps it up, guys. Thanks for watching here. Of course, if you want to follow more information, we'll be here. We'll try to get maybe another video tomorrow. If not, we'll be posting on all our social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and LinkedIn. And if you're curious about what we do here professionally as a company, you can visit us at weatherworksinc.com. We'll see you all next time. Have a safe and happy weekend.